On 7 Nightly News, police investigating the shooting death of a police officer at Nova Gardens. Uh, Exclusive pictures of the new high-tech security cameras that'll be watching you this Christmas. And Cold Chisel makes its return. Then on Today Tonight, the cell cameras which show an Adelaide man having his shoulder broken by police. He claims brutality, but how do police deal with violence in custody? Also tonight, two strangers in a wedding, the unseen honeymoon tapes and why things went so wrong. Nobody knows how to Fine, mostly sunny time now for Martin Malloy. Live across this big brown, flat, mysterious, crazy country, Coca-Cola Island presents Martin Malloy with Mick Malloy and Tony Martin. And today, well, there's been a number of rumours floating round about this show and its hosts, and we're going to put them to bed once and for all. For example, Mick, mm. what exactly did you mean on Friday's program when you said you'd be late for work today because you were being fitted for a gerbil? <laughs> what exactly does that mean? No comment. You're playing with our listeners' minds. Yeah. Also today, we'll fire up the controversial <laughs> Martin Malloy Job Network. Recall our very first pilot for this program. That'll be unpleasant. Russell Gilbert is lurking about. We'll have Radio Gladiators, Pease Explain, and Paul Hester back from his vacation in um, the Persian Gulf, I think. I'll be it. It's all coming up on the program. Former Media Watch host Stuart Littlemore describes as... Nasty, cowardly stuff. Martin Malloy. <laughs> It'd be Matchbox 20, 3 a.m. Afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Martin Malloy for yet another week right around the nation with myself, Tony Martin, and this bloke here. You've probably heard the new Mr. Kate Winslet. Mick Malloy. Oh, I'm chuffed today. How did you do it? Oh, mate, I, I cannot reveal my secrets. Did you lure her into the boudoir with a stack of pastries? What was your technique? <laughs> what were you up to? I cannot tell. All right, we're going to get to that later, mm. but uh, let's get to the big news because there are a lot of rumours floating about in the papers, in the corridors uh, mm. here at the station, all about. And indeed, it's Sansia's mum's... Uh, well, Battle of the Boot Scooters pre-Christmas scoot-off boot scoot palooza on the weekend. I know uh, all people were talking about were the rumours that this program will not be returning for a fifth year. And uh, sadly, those rumours are true. Mm. Uh, in short, Mick and myself are knackered and it's time for this program to have a bit of a lie down. No. Uh, no. Uh, uh, no, no, Gracie, turn that off. We won't be having any of that. Sure, yeah. it's a bit sad, but we don't want to talk, well down that track. I think, you know, no. let's just leave it alone. Mm. We don't want any of that kind of stuff on the show. All right, Gracie? You have an that no, that's enough. Mm. We're not dead. <laughs> All right, we're just stopping doing the program. <laughs> we don't want to hear that. What's that other one people always use? No. them taken out and burnt. <laughs> There'll be none of that. Oh, just get them out of your system. It's the last time we're going to be hearing it. And I done? know this is probably coming as a, uh, as a shock to a lot of people, Mick, mm. because a lot of people think that we just rock up at five to four and piss off at five past six. I know my mum does. <laughs> yes. But how many sketches have you written in the last four oh, years? Mate. A thousand? Do you reckon I could write another double O, double five <laughs> sketch if I friggin' well tried? Do you think I could? Could I work out another way to get the idea of pulling your finger <laughs> into something. Do you think I could? I sat down the other day to scathe our Prime Minister. Came up empty. Well, Mick, don't worry, because the fact is, I believe... I believe the children are future. Take that one out as well, Gracie. Get rid of them all. Get rid of them all. Tony, if I could just take one uh, moment, there is something uh, in all seriousness I'd like to say. Yes, um, what would that <laughs> Oh, I did a fart. <laughs> You've been saving that, have you? <laughs> I've still got one in the tank. Saving that for our special announcement. Mm. Look, the fact is, it's been a huge amount of fun doing this program. Yep. It's been the most fun I've ever had with pants on. Indeed. And over the last four years, Mick, we've had... Um, we had joy, we had fun, we had seasons in the sun. That's one from your generation, isn't it, Gracie? <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Yeah. You, you know, just I, made that up. I'd like, you know, I wish a show like this could go on forever. Yeah. I really do, and I wish you could keep doing it. But when you've got a yearning, mm. when there's something inside you, you can't keep putting it off. Yeah. And with me, it's musical theatre. <laughs> and I, I feel if I don't go now, <laughs> you know, I don't want to die wondering. You're going to miss I, the boat. I'm going to miss the boat. Well, it's not over yet mm. because between now and our final show on December fourth, mm. you'll be hearing many of our favourite moments on the program making their last appearance ever. <laughs> Crazy. You've gone too far. Put that harmonica down. <laughs> you can't even play the harmonica. How are you doing that? 
<laughs> You're very clever. You're very clever. You know what? I, I love... My time here at the station has been fantastic, and everyone has been brilliant. Yep. But there's one thing, and you know, I don't ask a lot. No. But you get sick of asking, yeah. and... The cashmere tracky dacks. Oh, yeah, I know. You know, they yeah. never came through. I, how many hints can you drop? How many, you know, carry my favour, it's time. That time you broke into the station manager's office and wrote cashmere tracky dacks in goat's blood on his wall. <laughs> he never forgave you for that. You know, didn't get the message Didn't either. get the message, mate. Didn't and get the message. Our producer here, I notice, is, is looking a bit teary. And, Gracie, if I could just turn serious for a moment. Uh, you've been there from the beginning, sure. And actually, there is something we'd like to say to you, Gracie, in song. That's for you, buddy. What is that? Is that the one from Titanic? <laughs> <laughs> I don't recognise that one. Well, Mickey, yeah. in summary, yeah. uh, we're going to have a great two weeks here on the program. We, we really are. And, mm. you know, I don't want to... Um, well, I don't want to... Uh, And that song will not be appearing again over the next two weeks because the only man who'll be serenading us off is Frank Bennett. Welcome to your life. There's no turning back. One of your all-time favourites, Mickey. <laughs> That's right. The Tears for Fears classic, done properly. And, uh, yeah. Uh, if people have, have just tuned in, uh, yes, we, we are winding up the show in two weeks' time, and already the Prime Minister has sent us a personal message. I have accepted their resignations, and I believe that their resignations are appropriate. <laughs> oh, that'd be just like him. Yeah. He knows he's off the hook. We now. haven't heard the last of that bloke. Mm. There'll be more. But, hey, Mick, uh, while well, we're getting a bit nostalgic, yeah. let's think back because, you know, it was only about four years ago mm. that we were sitting here celebrating our 100th show. Wow. Remember that? And wasn't that a 
triumph. It just seems like yesterday. Hi, Pete Smith here in the studios of Martin Malloy as we celebrate 100 glorious shows. Martin Malloy has remained essentially unchanged since those early broadcasts all those years ago. I say, Michael, what's that, Anthony? Have you caught sight of this popular new starlet, Raquel Welsh, yet? Yes, she's certainly got a lot of talent up front. <laughs> Indeed. Here's my impression of her preparing for a public appearance. <laughs> <laughs> and over the years, the program has brought you some of the biggest names in show business. And now someone who we predict is going to be around for quite some time. Here she is, Fairly Arrow. There have been heartwarming moments, like the time Mick and Tony met Luke and Jonah, the Siamese twin babies. Hey, no talking while his mouth's full. But it hasn't all been smooth sailing. Who could forget the time the lads played host to Blimpy, the lactose intolerant cat? So, Blimpy, which of all your film and TV appearances has been. Oh, no, Ty, look, he's got number two. <laughs> And the show received a record number of complaints for use of bad language when the controversial material girl Madonna dropped by. So, Madonna, welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, your new album's pretty f***ing awful. It sure is, Tone. It's f***ing horrible. It's not f***ing wrong, it's f***ing shit. What do you think, Pete? It's f***ing. But whenever things have started to look bad, Mick and Tony have always managed to pull something new out of the bag. Please welcome back our old friend Blimpy. <laughs> Oh, no, Ty, look, he's done it again. <laughs> Although the show nearly came off the rails the week Mick walked out following a dispute over parking spaces and Tony decided to replace him with a sound alike. Now, Mick, the latest survey results show that beer is not as popular as it used to be. What is going on in this country? We're a nation of dead set Nancy boys. Beer is number nine on the list. Milk is number one. Now, all I'm saying is, someone out there is not pulling their weight. What a load of pussies! But the show achieved its highest ratings ever a week later when I stepped in and healed the rift. And now, please welcome someone else with a big future in front of her, Colette. Hi, Tone. Mick, what are you doing here? Sorry, Tone. Just a little last-minute surprise arranged by Pete. Call me Boutros Boutros Copperart. And who's this with you? Yes, Tone. It's Blimpy. <laughs> Just a few memorable moments from 100 glorious shows. Radio Gladiators is coming up. Call us now on 1-800-657-657 on SAFM. That'd be stars on 54 if you could read my mind and the countdown to the final Martin Malloy is officially underway mm. if you've just joined us and uh, we're recalling old moments and Mick, it's not the first time we've uh, been removed from the air. <laughs> no, that's uh, true. Of course, we've removed ourselves in this, <laughs> that's right. in this instance, but uh, do you remember when we were taken off in Tasmania? Yes, I do. And we decided to call someone who's made a few appearances on the program and that is Debbie's mum. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie's mum. Debbie's mum who's uh, getting on in years mm -hmm. down in Tasmania. Yep. Not a fan of the program program at all, no. despite the huge amount of flowers we'd sent her over the years. That's right. Remember when we got axed? We gave her a call. Hello. Hello, is that Debbie's mum? Yes. It's uh, Mick Malloy and Tony Martin here. Remember we spoke to you earlier on Mother's Day? It is not. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. You know it's us. Stop what? mucking around with us now. You prove it. Oh, the only way we can do that is with some toilet humour. But oh. if, if I remember correctly, you're not too fond on the toilet humour. I know I am not. <laughs> Thank you very much. Talk well. to me about something nice for a change. <laughs> Vulgar. It's our vulgarity, which we understand has had a sax from the Tasmanian airwaves. Have you heard about that, Debbie? No, and I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> did you have anything to do with the final decision? I wouldn't <laughs> tell you anyway, but you keep that a secret. Thank but, you for the flowers, even though I don't like you. Thank you very much for the flowers. They were beautiful. Right. What about Michael Flatley? Did he ever come round? Remember we were trying to arrange him to come round and do a bit of river dancing on your front lawn? I don't know him. You know, the Lord of the Dance, Michael Flatley. Oh, I wouldn't take your nose if you did, I suppose. <laughs> but I he's... think it was another idiot. 
<laughs> you, you don't like Michael Flatley either. Oh, I don't know. He wears his pants really, really high. You oh, know, how disgusting. Pulled right up his bottom. Have oh, you don't seen? tell me these things. I don't want to know. It's not very crude. Well, we just wanted to ring up and see if you could cheer us up a little bit because we're feeling a bit down since we got the arse from Tasmanian Radio. Oh, so am I. I've got the flu. If we were there right now, would you give us a big hug? No, I would not. You wouldn't give us a little cuddle? The trouble you start with you, you wouldn't know when to stop. <laughs> I agree, Debbie's mum. Mick Malloy here is all hands. I've heard you're all hands too. I'm not an octopus. <laughs> <laughs> What's the ring for? You're going to send me another bunch of flowers. Oh, we'll send you a bunch of flowers. Oh, that'll cheer me up. We're the ones who need cheering up. We've lost our jobs in Tasmania. So you your right to do silly things. <laughs> if you hated yourself, you wouldn't have got the show. <laughs> well, we accept all that, Debbie's mum, but what we want Don't you... Don't call me Debbie's mum, call me Dawn. Describe yourself to us, Dawn. I will not. <laughs> You'd only put me down if I did. Not at all. I'm yeah. your biggest supporter. What did you get the sack for? We were sacked because we were bagging Tasmania, according to the front page of today's Mercury. Just as well you weren't. We've never said anything bad about Tasmania. I oh, certainly hope not. Are How you... often do you come here? Been there a couple of times in the last three years. Oh. I'm not allowed back at the moment. Oh. There's a slight legal thing hanging over my head. <laughs> oh, dear. But as soon as that restraining order's lifted, I'll have my uh, bot bot and the Taz cat. <laughs> Oh, and I'll be down to see you, Dawn. That'll be nice for you. I can hardly wait. Would you set a room aside for me? Would you? Would you? Oh, damn, I wouldn't say you're too dangerous. I wouldn't set any room aside for you. John Laws, I might. Oh, oh, here we go. Do you like John Laws? Of course, he's a nice chap. Do you like him better than us? He likes his grog, too. <laughs> Does he really? Yes. Hey, Dawn, uh, we're really calling to enlist your support today. What for? We're wondering if you'd be prepared to launch... A bit of a protest march down the main street of Hobart. Yeah, like hell. Over my dead body, son. <laughs> I will send you, you flowers. I am some sort of freak. <laughs> <laughs> i got more to do than walk down the main street, thanks. What else is uh, on your mind at the moment, Dawn? Is there anything else you're fed up with? Yes, the world and everything in it. What's wrong, Dawn? Down to the pack. That's Where's a... all the happy people gone? Well, we were trying to make people happy. We were just trying to put a smile on people's faces and we got kicked out of town. Yes, you do get carried away a bit, you must admit. <laughs> anyway, I must go and lay down. I'm feeling poorly. OK. You're what... really going to send me some flowers? We'll send you two lots of flowers. Oh, they were beautiful. They really were. They lasted for nearly a fortnight. You see, we're not all bad. No, that's what I say. Pity couldn't be like this all the time. <laughs> Mm. I love you, Dawn. I love you too. Bye-bye. <laughs> right. Bye-bye. <laughs> That's the brawl with Torn here at Martin Malloy. We're at Ain't Over Yet. There's more coming up. Uh, Radio Gladiators. We've got Paul Hester returning from wherever he's been. Beautiful. We've got Pease Explain. That's forging on to the next hour. Okay. But let's welcome somebody else who's mm. uh, got a final show coming up. Yep. Coming up tonight, in fact, mm -hmm. Russell Gilbert. Hey, Gilberto. <laughs> oh, guys. So sad to hear uh, that you're going. It's going to be a it's going to be a shock. There's a lot of people crying out there on the road now, we I believe. Did, look, we did have a long, sad decline planned and worked out. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be like, you know, where were you when John Lennon got shot. Well, when you heard Martin Malorton had given it up, you know where I was? I was sitting on the crab. Yeah. <laughs> ah, good. So, so was our producer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I was in Nebraska. <laughs> Didn't take you long to get your buns in here, Gilbo. We announced in break one, we're quitting. Look, you're sitting in my chair. <laughs> Mate, Mate, I'm what's ends. your game? What are you I'm doing? I'm going to get in the car and just <laughs> move on down the station. <laughs> you live in Perth. How did you, how did you get here? He's double -pumped. His car's out the front with the hazard lights on. The door's still open. Mate, He's ran see. straight in. <laughs> Look, I, I don't know which part to play. I've got glasses to play you, yeah. uh, and I've got, you know, I've got the, 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 the loud yell to play, Mick. Oh, you've got I me down. I can do it if you want me to. <laughs> I'm there. Oh, it's a good workout. Hey, now, Gilbo, we're obviously looking uh, for ideas on how to wind up something, you know. It's been a long time since we had to wind something up. So what are you doing for your final episode tonight? How does it end? Now, let us guess. Is it you... And you cast all singing Wind Beneath Our Wings, swaying mm. in the breeze. Is it something mm. like that? No, it's, uh, we're singing Give Peas a Chance. That's, oh, that's, no, no. <laughs> that's, that, that's your new album, Eat Your Peas. Yeah. And I'm, I listen and I'm, I'm telling everyone out there, it's a great thing. All I am saying is give peas a chance. <laughs> How are you winding up your show, Gilbert? Oh, oh, come on, Gilbert. 
I'm, I'm winding up my show tonight. It's a, the normal thing. You know what? I've, I've noticed it. Because uh. I watch Benny Hill as a kid. I've closed every show with thanks very much. We'll see you very, very soon. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know I picked that up from Benny Hill. <laughs> and, and, and that's how I've closed every yeah, show. Yeah, What about the knotted handkerchief on your hand? <laughs> <laughs> you can hear the earth beats pound as they raced across the ground. <laughs> and the clatter of the wheels as they spun round and round. So, His name was Ernie. <laughs> and he drove the fastest milk cart in the West. Oh, we could have our own Benny Hill. Yeah. Right, yeah. Now, I'm closing the show tonight. It's just a normal show, but some good things on the night. This is a sketch from Hong Kong, Enter the Gilbo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I went to I Hong Kong. I saw a preview of that. It yeah, looks fantastic, yeah. Gilbo. Uh, that's uh, Enter the Gilbo. I've got the pantsless cop, which is a, a which is a cop who's out there. and uh, a pantsless cop. He, <laughs> mate, uh, he, he works undercover and stuff. It's very interesting. Uh, I tell you, one of the, the funniest comedy sketches I've seen this year was the cuddling detective. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you yeah, bringing yeah. him back? Oh, I don't know. Maybe next year. Who knows? You know, uh, there's no, no word out there. I would have thought that the people who make these <laughs> murder call style shows <laughs> yes. yeah. would be looking at a whole mini a Halifax style miniseries of the cuddling detective. There's a movie in it. There's I a movie in it. He's all hands. <laughs> the cuddling detective. Yeah. You've come up with a few franchisable ideas. What about the designated dickhead? Where's his own mm, series? Yes, I mean, but there is one in every group, isn't there? And no one knows who it is. You know, no. what I mean, if you put the sticker on him, yeah. you got your designated dickhead. You know who he is, and you know, well, he's the one that can just put crap on anyone in the in the pub, and you can get him beaten up. And that's. Uh, I don't know if there's a series in the designated dickhead, but, yeah. uh, Were you, but was it hard getting the role? of the designated dickhead Gilbo? Did you, did you have to fight for that one? Did you have to prove yourself dickhead no. material? No. I just opened up the top drawer and pulled out my own stickers and just stuck them. I, I am a designated dickhead. All right. All right. Well, uh, given that you are one, would you like to stick around for Radio Gladiators? Oh, yeah. You know, you know I'd love to stick around for Radio All Gladiators. All right. And you mentioned Benny Hill. And what, what have you done? You've, you've been accidentally signing off your show as <laughs> With, Benny Hill. Yes, thank you very much. And we hope to see you very, very soon. Well, would you I didn't say that tonight. I think I said, I hope to see you next time or some mm. other time. But it's a, it's a fun chat. Well, we've got a bit of Benny Hill for you to have a listen to. Okay. You know, he's done so many songs over the years, but yeah. not many people realise that he was the first man to do that song. I think it was the Aria Award for Song of the Year a while back. Mm -hmm. What was it called? It was Kylie Minogue and Nick Cave. That's right. Uh, Where oops. the Wild Roses Grow. That's the one. But it was originally done by Benny Hill. Don't believe me? Check this out. Well, on the third day, I took her to the river. I showed her the rose and we kissed. And the last thing she heard was a muttered word as I knelt above her with a rock in me fist. Yes, I took her with the roses grow, where the wind is as light as a thief. And I kissed her goodbye, said, oh, beauty must die. And I let down plant a rose in her teeth. Yes, they called her Eliza Dane. They said that she was the best. They called her Eliza Dane. And she drove the fastest milk cart in the West. Oh, there you go. All right. In his debt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't even know that, that he'd done that, and here I was talking about it. How, mm. how coincident. That's spooky. Another mm. magic moment here at Martin Malloy. This is Martin Malloy. Yes, of course, this series. Brought to you by Coca Cola Island. Hi, I'm Richard from Morfittville, listening to Martin Malloy on SAFN. It is still Martin Malloy, thanks to Coca-Cola Island, who have stuck with us through mm -hmm. thick and thin. They have indeed. And now let's have a bit of this. Radio Gladiators, your chance to represent your state and win fame, glory and fabulous prizes. Here's today's challenge. Russell Gilbert is with us uh, today on Martin Malloy because his final show is going to air tonight. That's right. Uh, I'm sure that'll be back for another series, though, Gilbo. Surely. Oh, no, no one knows. You know, right? you know, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually thinking radio now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, get in the queue. <laughs> yeah. I'll just run out a big pile of telly sketches and, uh, and turn them over. I'm using the back of the paper to write radio. All right. Stuff. Well, I think Mikey Robbins wants a word first. But, uh, you know. Now, listen... Uh, Gilbo, <laughs> we're obviously out of a gig in two weeks' time. We're going to be looking for a job. That's right. So it's time to fire it up. Mm. The Martin Malloy Job Network. Yes. It's failed us in the past. <laughs> That's why we're giving it another run. <laughs> it's going to fail us again. So, we love failure. So let's find out uh, what kind of work is actually out there in the community. Mm. Call up with new jobs for me and Mick. I've always pictured us, Mickey, mm. uh, years from now, driving a cab together, mm. still doing our show to whoever's in the back. <laughs> you know, just with 
maybe Gracie hiding in the boot. <laughs> yes. Firing off tapes of music so yes. we can play Radio Gladiators. Oh. Hey, uh, anyone over the back got a funny pet story? <laughs> <laughs> I'll put on a song while you think about it. What have we got in the glove box? Three pack of CDs! <laughs> That's what I've always said. people stop and have to put in half the fare if right. they're the special guest. And we're picking up our special guest in just a minute. <laughs> well, we stop at street corners uh, so for all the complaints. That's right. If people can bark them at us. Mm. Any ideas, Mickey? Oh, uh, look, I've got something I've always wanted to do, but yeah. I... Gee, do I dare to dream? What are you Could talking about? Real? What? What? Wheel to the left. Wheel to the left, buddy. No ramming. Keep your hands inside the cars. And let's keep them going in a clockwise direction. No ramming. <laughs> it's just a dream, but I... You know... But you, got the, you got the bum crack for that. You know? <laughs> you know, but you wonder, though, is that how it'll turn out, or... Will it be different somehow? I'm... <laughs> hey, little fella, spare some change for the wilderness society. Matthew, Matthew, come here. Get away from that koala bear. It's drunk. Ah, uh, get stuff. And put that cigarette out. Look at you. You're a disgrace. Hey, lady, can you pin my flap up at the back? My, <laughs> my bottom's getting cold. <laughs> Your bottom's getting cold. Mm. You're doing old material when you're in that mm. gig. Mm. What a dreamer. I reckon that is yeah. somehow prophetic. <laughs> Mick, uh, I'm getting into sport. You're getting into sport. Yeah, because you... There's the bombshell no, no. we've been looking yeah. for. Because I finally found a sport that I reckon I'd be good at. Oh? Junior boxing. <laughs> <laughs> Punching on with these kiddies. Oh, yeah, give it to them, Tom. I reckon I can take a couple of them down. Take no prisoners, buddy. <laughs> and the, what's the bout you've organised? It's me versus Nathan Cavallari. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's getting big. He might do. You want to get into the girl box? Are we, can we get <laughs> a lot easier? <laughs> Will we use guitars? Can we... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, All right. Here's someone with an unusual job. Mm. Simon Morley. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of puppetry of the penis fame. Well, you know what? I reckon he'll be grieving more than anyone today because I reckon our announcement, while it was hard for us, is the final nail in the coffin for the puppetry of the penis bandwagon. Because Those boys are out of a gig. Put your dicks away. It's over. <laughs> it's all over! Because without us, Simon Morley is just a man without pants <laughs> driving around in a van. <laughs> really, isn't he? That's all it is. <laughs> He's not going to bob up on John uh, Laws, is he? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> he does, John Laws. <laughs> he does. Yeah. That's one. He's, I don't want to elaborate. He uses a stylo pad for a Merc and it's very lifelike. <laughs> Have you seen... Uh, yeah, I've, so I've been fun. looking at the job adverts in the in the papers, Mickey. It didn't take long, did you? You're, you're already cracking. But there was an interesting case uh, in the papers last uh, Thursday, I think this was. Mm. Uh, someone has won the rights to use, uh, well, ads, uh, phrases and ads which may seem discriminatory. Right. Uh, because, you know, they're worried about being sued. But this yeah. is an ad which has been approved. Listen to this. Right. Wanted sexy, sexy voluptuous tees in her 20s. They're allowed to use that. I think right. it's actually uh, the White House are putting this ad in. <laughs> <laughs> that is, you can uh, use that phrase in uh, an advertisement. A modelling agency, in fact, is one hey, of the rights to. That's how we got stance. Oh, is that it? <laughs> it was e the exact same phraseology. Sexy, voluptuous tease. <laughs> Nabbed her. And she, it's still working for me. <laughs> Have a squeeze, boys. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Woohoo! Oh, I'm that's, sad, that's, sad to nearly be ending. That's illegal. I love Gilbo's... His <laughs> acting is so good, he's actually looking at our producer when he made, <laughs> when he made that noise. Uh, puppetry of the Penis, the reason I mention it, uh, we've received a fantastic email mm. about the origins of Puppetry of the Penis. Okay. You wouldn't think there'd be a precedent for it in history. Origins? We're going to be going way back in the next hour okay. on Martin Malloy. But in the meantime, uh, call up with a new job yeah. for me and Mick. Anything you reckon we'd be good at... <laughs> Yep. And do we have a prize, Gracie? Oh, yes, we certainly do. And it, uh, well, it's understood to involve our guest today, but we're not quite sure. The King of Coca-Cola Island. You are the King of Coca-Cola well, Island. Don't come in here and say you're not the King of Coca-Cola well, Island. Look, what do you mean? Well, look, there could be somebody else. Up. Oh, look, I, I want to be the king. Nobody else is wearing the hat made out of beaks on our island, Coca-Cola <laughs> Island. It's got to be you, Gilbo. Like it sounds like the place to be. I want to go there. I don't who's know. Who's trying to cut your lunch? <laughs> who's, who's the man who would be king? Borny. It must Borny. be Borny. Shane Bourne. Marty Fields. <laughs> Alexander Downer. It's somebody. <laughs> <laughs>
don't know. We've got a Coca-Cola Island pack for the winner, and you'll be in the draw for a trip for you and three friends to go to Coca-Cola Island going off this Friday on this program. 1-800-657-657. That's what we're talking about today at Radio Gladiators on Martin Malloy. Russell Gilbert is sitting in. He's had a few jobs. What's the uh, worst job you've done over the years, Gilbert? Uh, probably putting holes in donuts. That was... Oh, uh, yeah. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no. You worked on the stunning line for a few years, did Yes, you? I yeah, so yeah. that was a That was a terrible job. And uh, well, uh, there's a lot of things you can do. You know you can do? You do that old thing I used to do was sell old newspapers at traffic lights. There's some, oh, yeah. There's money to be made in that. Sure. They're just on the move, mate. You just hand them and, oh, there they go. <laughs> and it's environmentally friendly. <laughs> That's true. We're looking for a new gig, me and Mick. Mm. Uh, people have some fantastic ideas. Uh, Craig is on the line. Craig? Yep. What do you got for us, mate? Well, you have been dishing out shit for about four years now. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. So I figure the best job in the world for you is to walk behind the mounted police when they're on parade yeah. and pick up their shit after they shit. Yeah. Uh. I thought we were trying to get out of show business. <laughs> that what we That'd be our big break, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd fight you for that. It'd it serve us right. A little cart that you can push, so you can push that down with your little tray. One can push mm. and one can shovel it and take it in turn. No, You've given this way too much thought, Craig. I reckon they should pick it up with their hands, Craig. Yeah, I, no, reckon, that's what I, reckon. I reckon Craig's been trying to get through with this is the answer for every Radio Gladiators <laughs> we've done in four years. Oh, yeah. All so right. I've been trying to get through for four years. I have never been able to get through to this show. I can't get through. I go down during the ads to the shop outside the 7-Eleven. I phone up. Sandy, you won't let me off. I know. What's going on? It's quite a spectacle. All right, uh, Dean is on the line. Dean, are you there? Yep. What is our new gig? What is it? Well, with your great figures, I reckon tabletop dancing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you don't... You don't want to do that, boys, because you can get laminex burn. You can know, you really? on the table really? tops, Have yes. you done a bit of this? <laughs> I've done a little bit of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's obviously more skilled than uh, we'd be used to. Oh, There's actual yeah. choreography. I wouldn't, don't think we could. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, mm. You've got to know when to tip a jug of beer over your breasts. That's I mean, right. You know, it's not just random. Mm. I couldn't compete with your bony ass. <laughs> That'd be taking all the big tips, you know what I mean? <laughs> People be stuffing those lobsters down the back of your pants, <laughs> and I'd be sitting there gyrating it round but just coming up empty. <laughs> what were we going to call it? Short change. Do we, do we need a name for our tabletop dancing club? What would we call oh, it? Oh, I don't know. Brown fingers. <laughs> Brown fingers. <laughs> and, and I reckon, Tone... And <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> and, and Tone, I reckon, we just it's just us in our underpants, yeah. and we, the only tips we take are coin. So the coin has to just weigh our underpants down <laughs> at know. the end of the gig. Yeah. And we have the wife run under so they can slip the coins in that little slot. <laughs> but, Mick, how out of shape are our underpants going to be once the GS? T comes in. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's Hold move on. Yeah. Uh, Lee's got an idea. You there, Lee? Yeah, hi. How are you? What should we be doing? Um, you know how much you love Andrew Lloyd Webber and Cats and all that? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I was thinking, just go to the opera and sit in the top booth like the two old guys from the Muppets oh. and just bag out in all the plays. Yeah. Yeah. That's not bad. Mick often does that himself for his own amusement. <laughs> yeah. Gee, yeah. you've savaged the boy from Oz too many no. times, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> I give it to him every night. I show him the ass from Oz. <laughs> two butt cheeks leaning over the balcony. <laughs> Cop that near do well. Gilbo, you've been heckled over the years. Have you ever gone along and done any heckling yourself? Have you yeah, ever done that? No, you know, you know I remember I, I did heckle a comedian when I, I went and seen uh, My Bear Lady, I think it was called, with a bunch of me, mates when I was 21. <laughs> Wait, and well. I was given the, given the comedian a heaps, uh, yeah. heaps and heaps before this, before I even decided I was ever going to do it. Right. And, you know, my mates have been giving me a lot of shit about the shirt I was wearing. I had oh, this yeah, horrible yeah. shirt on. Yeah. And they've been telling me off all day about this shirt. And mm. then at the end of the... Uh, I gave it to this comedian that much. Yeah. And then he goes, I can tell you you're here, for a, you're, you're here for a laugh, mate. I can tell by the shirt you're wearing. <laughs> and my table went up because my mates have been right. giving me heaps. And they, they, they loved it. And he buried me. I was, I was done. And I was done. That, it, years later when you were doing that for a job, did that bloke ever show up? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> really <laughs> well dressed? <laughs> my bare lady? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? Oh, what? Eight of me mates, it was a strip show and he was... He, he was, <laughs> he was a, I thought he it was, was a comedy gig. Now no, it was no, a strip show. My bare lady. A, he was in the middle of a strip and we just wanted to get him off because we didn't come to hear lame jokes. We were 21. We'd never seen naked women. <laughs> Did you heckle the naked women? <laughs> Don't show us your tits. <laughs> All right. Thanks very much, Lee. Have we got to... Chris, are you on the line? Yeah, how are you, guys? What's the gig okay. for us, mate? Oh, I've got a few for you, actually. Yeah. Oh, here we go. First one you got, you guys would make, I reckon, top security guards. Security mm. guards? Mm. Sorry, that'd be an interesting one for you. Yeah, what sure. else you got? 
Mm. Second one, you guys could be bouncers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I reckon you've probably met a few uh, people who'd want to... Knock you about in your time. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, you've done and your first, research. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about the um, security guards. I know yeah. Tony Martin already carries a piece, but oh, yeah. it's on his head. Oh, look, that can't be. It's just showing up to a building, getting a tiny business card, folding it in half and putting it in between the doors and going home, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you get your mates and go, oh, could you just put that in those doors on the way home, Paul? Yeah, I can't even be bothered going. What's your third one there, Chris? The third one, you guys, are, uh, you know, the set of traffic lights, you see those guys who come up and wash your windscreen? Ah, oh, that'd oh, be right. Yeah. Uh, That'd be what we deserve. Absolutely. How long have we been bagging those people? Oh, yeah. Oh. No, we will do intersection work, but we're going to do something your car doesn't do for you. Yeah. We've said it before. That's right. Here's a little trick to do when you get someone do, uh, who does your windscreen. Yeah. Just before the light, ask them to do the back window, because then, then you can just take off before you give them the money, <laughs> and you don't run them over. I mean, if you take off when you're doing the oh, front, yeah. it's a lot of mess, and you've got to stop at the next set of yeah, lights. Yeah, so you to clean the blood off. As so you get them to do the back so you can just take straight off. Speaking from personal experience. <laughs> I think so. All right, uh, not bad idea from Chris, but mm. Sue is waiting to go. Sue? Hi, how are you? What's the job for us? I'd like you both to be school bus drivers. Oh. Because oh. I reckon if we can put you with a bunch of kids and at the yeah. end of the day, if you've still got a sense of humour, yeah, okay. well, then you're doing well. I'm picturing a whole bus full of kiddies, you know, listening to what we got to say and going, it's just a little bit immature for my life, <laughs> don't you feel? I'm seeing you behind the wheel of yeah. the bus yeah. and me on the roof yeah. in High the big school. dress <laughs> from Priscilla. <laughs> I'm talking high school here, guys. They oh, could probably school. teach you a trick or two. Oh, we, right. They supply us with some of our best material. <laughs> That's right. Know, so. yeah. They'll teach you a trick or two. All we learned in the high school bus was how to moon old women at the opposite bus stops going past. Oh, it what, what do they learn at high school these days? Yeah, how to load a gun, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably. Kids today. <laughs> All right, let's uh, speak to Dawn. Dawn, what's your idea? I reckon you should work in a funeral parlour. Oh, yeah. All right. What, what, yeah, yeah. what could we bring to that? Well, that way you could still tell all your jokes and everything and you wouldn't offend any of us. Mm. Ah, I see. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Wearing life being a T-shirt. Just, uh, you know, just, yeah. just, yeah. So the idea being dead people really facts in to complain. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. That's the one. Well, I'll give it a go. Uh, it's a tough crowd, but we'll mm. give it a burl. I think George Smilovich used to turn up at uh, funerals wearing life being a T-shirt. So I think Did so. he? Yes. Yeah, he's a practical joker. Well, well, well. Go. All right. Up, Crikey. Well, that's George Smilovich. He'll be in the queue for this show. Yeah. <laughs> Have we Bring got in. finally Aaron? Are you there? Aaron. Yep, I'm there, Mick and Tone. How you doing? Good. What do you got for us? I reckon you guys should open up a school of etiquette. A school of etiquette? <laughs> Your manners are incredible. The amount of belching and farting that I here on yeah. your show. Yeah, it'll be belching and farting, but we'll have, like, books on the top of our heads at the time. <laughs> well, That's right. We'll be, our posture will be near perfect. That's mm. it. It doesn't just happen, you know. Which one do you like here, Russell Gilbert? Oh. We've got uh, shovel and shit. We've got the tabletop dancers. We've got muppets. We've got yeah. security guards. We've got school bus drivers. We've got working down the funeral parlour and, of course, the Martin Malloy School of Etiquette Look, and I, Deportment. The one that made me laugh, you, which you seem to have the most fun with, guys, was the actual tabletop dancers. Yes, yeah, so uh, right. I Dean, the tabletop dancer, Dean. Are you there, Dean? Yeah. All right, it looks like we're going to have to go with your idea. Oh, that's that's right. not going to be pretty. You hey, and the first dancers for you, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Come and get it. Don't touch. You uh, like the you've got peace down there, make them bigger. The uh, Coca Cola Island pack is yours, and you're in the draw for the trip for you and three friends to go to Coca Cola oh. Island. That's going off this Friday. Thanks yep. a lot. Yep. Right. Mm. And who knows? Who will be there? Mm. Scacy, that's who. Maybe. We're yeah, you never know. Oh, you never know. A few special guests. Uh, we will be back at the next hour, yep. and guess who's back as well? Paul Hester. <laughs> This is Martin Malloy. What a handicap. How they've held me back these many months. Brought to you by Coca-Cola Island. Nobody knows how to lay like Fine and mostly sunny all week. And in this hour of Martin Malloy, it's not over yet. We'll have Pease explain our very first pilot for this show. And yes, there's always room for Paul Hester, all thanks to Coca-Cola Island. It's Chumba Wumba with Tub Thumping here at Martin Malloy. It's the second hour. We mm. didn't say goodbye properly to Russell Gilbert. He's no. still here. And Gilbert, we're going to be seeing you in again before the final show on Friday uh, week. I hope so. I mean, uh, it's very, very sad for me to see you go. I mean that, and I wish you both best of luck. I mean that sincerely. Oh, give him the O. Oh, Smith, Gracie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> give him the O. Oh, Smith. <laughs> hey, come on, where can people see you live? I know it's your final show tonight, Channel 9, 8.30. 30, and I'm doing a couple of shows, one at the Canberra Labor Club on the 3rd of December and one at the four, on the 4th at the 
Broadway Entertainment Centre in Wagga Wagga. Oh, yeah. in Wagga Wagga. Wagga Wagga, Wagga and Canberra. Oh, yeah. Fourth, third and fourth. So Catch uh, the travelators. Yeah, <laughs> do it, buddy. And, and maybe in January I'm going to head up to Queensland, maybe do a few gigs and yeah. get a bit of a tan. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. But, uh, Gilbo, can I ask, are the rumours true that tonight uh, you will be taking uh, Ali McBeal head on by wearing the micro mini for the whole opening model? <laughs> yeah, and, and it is true. I, I have got that eating disorder. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right. People are getting it wrong. They're thinking that Sally McBeal's got the eating disorder. Mm. It's me. Okay, I've come clean, Dan. You can read about me next week in Who? Give him a round. <laughs> yeah, Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank you, Gilbo. Thank you, Gilbo. We'll see you again. And uh, our guest is here, Mickey. Good. And he's been working. This bloke has a few ideas for our final show. Mm. You and Mick playing celebrity in a sack on the steps of the opera house. You can't go wrong. <laughs> well, he should know because he is Paul Hester. <laughs> Bloody part-timers, hey? <laughs> what a pair of part-timers. I told you to stay with the magic. Don't mess with your magic. That was the first thing I told you, boys, years ago. Yeah, just before you resigned from Crowded House. <laughs> Mate, that was after 15 years of carrying around the older guy's luggage. Now, I don't know about you, boys. How long have you been on the go here? What, three uh, or four months? How long has it been? Since what August. Doing? Bloody, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gracie, bloody, doing all the hard work, filling in all the forms after you go to the gym and six. 15 and all that stuff. Oh, oh, you're out of line, that. buddy. You know what? You are out of order. And it's not often I say that, but you are out of order, mon frere. <laughs> and what's, where did the sundan come from? Are you looking yeah. like George Hamilton? No, <laughs> look, no, look, I, 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 look, I could reveal the rest of my body, but you don't want to see that. No, it's no, like no, a clash. On. No, you save that for Black and White magazine. No, I'm brown from the neck up to television form. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. it's just makeup. Oh, man. is that what it's about? See, yeah, once you're yeah. on the telly, yeah. you just leave it on. You just mm. look like JR yeah. every day. Yeah. That's yeah, right. Yeah. I bumped into Russell in the in the hallway. Yeah. He's looking gorgeous. His tan's up. Mine's up. Mm -hmm. Our people are in touching us up all the time. <laughs> Is that right? Beautiful life. You guys should get a show. How, ha <laughs> <laughs> how has life... I mean, you get up in the morning, Paul, yeah, the way yeah. you've always done. Yeah, yeah. But how has your everyday life changed by now being on the telly? Oh, I do a lot less. Hey? Yeah, now I'm on the telly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't. No, sorry, mate, I can't. I'm on the telly at 10.30 tonight. It's only, what, it's 5 o'clock, so I've got to start getting ready. I can't. I can't. No, sorry, mate, I can't uh, put her to bed yeah. tonight. I've yeah. got to watch the telly. Yeah, it was recorded in <laughs> April, but I'm flat chat. <laughs> oh, no, see, now's then when I'm making my notes for the mm. next series. Oh, you know, okay. which, uh, yeah. you know, if anyone wants mm. to give me a call from the ABC <laughs> or, and, uh, or <laughs> Beyond Productions, and I'd appreciate that. You say you, you've made some notes on your... Yourself. What it, go yourself, Hesse. What have you noticed about you? What would you like to change so um, far about your performances? I've got two words. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been looking at my head on the telly and there's a few little bald spots poking through. Oh, really? Oh, they've been shooting me from behind. They've yeah. been shooting me from on top. It's a conspiracy. It is. And <laughs> they I've set been... out to do that. Oh, look, me and Russell Morris, we got together, put our heads together. What do I do, <laughs> Russell? You just do this. You make sure the cameras are there and there. Don't let them do any stuff over from the lighting grid. Yeah. And what do I see on the telly? Week in and week out. It's shots of Hesse's weak points. Yeah, mm. but so I'm going see, down... you're exposing them. That's what the shed is all about. I guess so. I mean, mm. you can't get caught up in that hissy, otherwise you'll end up like that Bruce Willis. That film was on telly last night. What, what, what? Oh, Hudson yeah. Hawk. Oh, yeah. It's shocking, isn't yeah. it? That hasn't, you yeah. know, a lot of people said to me at the time, no, nah, no, nah, in five years' time, that's going to be a classic. <laughs> <laughs> hasn't happened yet. And that was the film where uh, Bruce Willis went back one frame at a time with the computers and uh, filled in the old bald spot. Mm. I Seriously. Just, I haven't got the time for that. No? You, you know, can't do that? No. Got nothing like that down the ABC? No, they got this can of spray that you can spray on your hair. That's instant hair. And, uh, I mean, some of the news guys use it, but I don't yeah. think I'm, I need to use it. I think I'd go the Greg Matthews, yeah, yeah, Tony Lockett's freaking me out on late night television. Uh -huh. If it works for me! You know, so I'm, you know, scared. I'm going to go in there and get a bit of that gear done, I think, for the yeah. next series. But what about uh, respect? Are you getting a lot more respect? People see you in the street and it's like there's a bit of awe there now. Oh, well, no, no, no. No, um, I got a car park space given up to me in Byron Bay last week. That was pretty good. <laughs> that I, doesn't happen ordinarily. No. Well, I'll tell you a funny story. I went to Nimbin. Oh, I'll yeah. tell you more about that next. But I, one guy I talked to on the street, and he, he came out and said, Mate, I love the show. Has he shared? It's unreal, mate. Hannaford was amazing, mate. It's great, mate. <laughs> and then his mate came up and went, Yeah, mate, I love the show, man. It's fantastic. <laughs> you know, and I said, Well, it's great. It's on the ABC, I guess, because it goes everywhere and everyone yeah. can watch it. And he went, Oh, well, we don't get the ABC, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I just left that there. So he was just picking it up somehow himself. <laughs> I don't know if I've been watched or not. <laughs> 
that was the mayor and deputy mayor of Nimbin. <laughs> and beautifully impersonated, too. Indeed. All right, That's we good. better find out what Hesse's been up to. Yeah. And uh, we'll do that next on Martin Malloy. That's hey, Jennifer Page with Crush. It's Martin Malloy. Paul Hester is here, back from his, uh, well, sabbatical, as we'll call it that. Mm. <sighs> You've been to Nimbin. Oh, look, you know, I went to Byron. I think he's still in Nimbin. I yeah. am. I'm, I'm looking at him. My head's up there. Mm. My my soul's a bit of my soul's left in the Nimbin Museum. Mm. Oh, surprise! Yes, I cut myself on one of the old combis <laughs> as I was trying to <laughs> lean in and steal something. <laughs> <laughs> After I'd made my dollar donation at the door. Uh, yeah, but anyway, um, I mostly stayed in Byron, mm. which is a you know a town unto itself. <laughs> sure, it's yep. funny. I think it's there's no high rise in Byron, so there's a lot of sun. Yeah. And everyone gets a lot of sun. So you go really wacko really quick after a okay. few years, you know. Oh, it's the sun, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah. So I went up there for a few few weeks and, and, and dagged around on the beach, did a bit of nude swimming, because mm. nude swimming's been banned. Yeah. First thing I did, cogs <laughs> off straight in. Funnily enough, no one seemed to be offended. No one saw anything. Banned? Why has it been banned? Was there an incident? Yeah, it was. They tried to create a nude bathing area in Uh, Byron, and hmm. the the, the council had been, you know, sort of voted, uh, eventually voted in favour of having this sort of stretch of beach was about a mile, two miles away from Byron Bay. You know, you have to get a bus and a tram to go there. So everyone's down there nude sunbanking. This young girl's down there nude sunbanking, and this, this sort of idiot dickhead guy running around I- nude, goes, decides to go jump on this girl while she's sunbathing oh, and okay. sort of, you know, hump a chump a romp a chomp sort of deal. Right. He goes to, you know, gets, they all go to court. The magistrate in Byron Court goes, well, you know, the girl's been sunbaking. She's asking for it. Oh, and they let him off scot-free. Is that right? So Byron is in a mess uh-huh. politically and uh, the law up there's gone mad. There's too much sun. There's not enough high-rise of old blokes in high-rise buildings getting a bit of, you know, staying out of the sun. Basically, is my mic still on? Yes, yeah. it's still going out. No, sorry oh, yeah, to have led you down that track. Happened. That's what happened. A, yeah, a grisly story. The only, the only question I'm asking is, was the judge nude at the time? Mm. Well, you know, there could be a good chance of, yeah. of that happening very soon. Well, you know, there's, nudity is bandied about, and we've talked about this mm-hmm. before, in the post-Full Monty era. <laughs> it yes. seems it's just okay to drop your pants whenever and whenever. Oh, yeah. And, well, it listen, do you see this in the news today, Mickey? Someone claims to have set... A world first nude radio record. That's right. Now, listen to this, Paul. Just th- see if you think this is authentic. How can you? How can you all tell that that's true? <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. But yeah. the Guinness Book are involved. The organisers of the uh, Far North Queensland annual Running of the Bulls charity event hope to enter the Guinness Book of <laughs> Records with an unusual feat: a live radio interview involving 200 nude men. The nude runners packed around a telephone booth for the interview with ABC Radio after completing laps of a large roundabout in the mining town of Waipa yesterday. The uh, event, which raises money for a good cause, blah, 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 staged every year. Now, so interviewing 200 nude men Mm. on the radio is enough to get you into the Guinness Book? Surely we can top that. (laughs) Surely we can get 210 nude blokes Damn it! round a microphone. We'll have a cramming competition in this studio. I'll just be nude blokes (laughs) all up against each other. And does that constitute an interview? You've got one person on the phone, Mm -hmm. 199 nude blokes just doing circles in the phone box. That's an interview, is it? Well, you know, we're all sitting around around the nude right now. And, you know, I wouldn't have thought it was worth commenting on. No. Because, you know, it just seems to me to be a natural thing to do. But these guys are trying to, you know, get some mileage out of it. If there's something positive we can do before we sign off, it's beat that 200 nude men on the radio record. Done. Are Mm. you going to lead the charge on this one, Paul? Mate, I'm there. I I am as I was born most of the time. You know me. I only put the tracky dacks on. You know, after the news yeah. in the evenings. You certainly I do. like to watch them right up there raw. Yeah. I like the news to hit me raw and go through the pores of my skin, <laughs> come out my butthole and my ear holes and my mouth and my nose. And, you know, I like to let it go through me and regurgitate back at them. <laughs> Well, I know that Brian Nail is retiring in Melbourne. Have you thought about uh, applying for that job, Paul? Oh, it's time for Brian to retire. I mean, I think he's sick of telling everyone what to do. He's Mm. sick of telling everyone what's going on. Brian told me this, Brian told me that. Mm. Brian told me the other day, I couldn't give a shit. Mm. Well, (laughs) see, that's where Brian Naylor went wrong. See, if he'd have spent the news bulletin in the nude, like you, he'd probably still be on air today. Well, he'd be a lot fitter. 
Mm. And the promos would be uh, what Paul reckons. <laughs> that would be the new jingle. <laughs> what Paul reckons. <laughs> Done. All right. Well, uh, we've hardly put your brain to good use yet, Paul. No. I reckon there's a lot more in there. Yeah. Do you want to go straight into this, Gracie? Is that what you're suggesting? Do you want to do this, guys? Uh, whatever. Who's helping Crazy. us out with Peas Explain? Gorinda. Gorinda. The bloke works uh. at our shop. Take it away. It's time to play... Please explain. That's right. Please explain. Please explain. To celebrate the release of Mick and Tony's third album, Eat Your Peas, we've given Please Explain a bit of a respray and hey presto. Please explain. It's got every other segment on the show green with envy, but don't worry, the gist is the same. Please explain. If something's got you buggered... Mick and Tony still want to hear about it. The so-called flatulence filter. Please explain. Gracie's attendance at Sexpo. Please explain. Those lazy bastards Mick and Tony refusing to do a fifth year. Please explain. Just call us with your stumper and we'll see if we can't nut it out for you live on air. And yes, we do have a prize for the most brain-bending conundrum. Every winner on Please Explain bags a three part of CDs featuring the soundtrack from 54, Danny the Singles, and surprise, surprise, Eat Your Peas. Okay, lads, you've still got some explaining to do. Oh, there's always explaining to do. Mm. And Eat Your Peas is apparently in the shops. Yes. Uh, world's longest comedy album. Paul, uh, what's the sort of etiquette when you put out a new album? Is it the done thing to sneak down to a record shop and see if they've got it? I mean, I'm too embarrassed mm. to go into a record shop in case mm. somebody sees me looking for Eat Your Peas. Really? Please explain. Yeah. And so, so where do you lurk? Yeah. Around, where do you go? Do you go? You just... I don't know. I just assume that it's out there because Pete told me so. Thank you, Dokey. Oh, you, 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 you've got to have the phone number. You yeah. should have the direct line right. to the big fella, the yeah. big G. Mm. Gadinsky's oh. got the bloody notes. He's got the papers. <laughs> He's sitting at home with about 20 litres of moisturiser on his forehead trying to get rid of that sunburn from the concert of the century. And um, he'd be at home now, sitting there like Gomez Bloody Adams with his ticker tape thing coming out going, hey, you want some money? Opening a drawer, throwing it at some kid. Hey, what do you want? What's your name? Get out of here. Do you want to buy it? Well, leave. Okay, uh, Mick and Tony, you just ring him up. What do you sell? What do you sell? 25, 35, 70, 80, 90. Call me in 10 minutes. <laughs> That's what you need. You know, it's all very well for you to go on about Michael Gadensky, but he's just had his concert of the century. Yeah. And I'm now, have you seen this photo in Who magazine today? No, no. It's on page oh, 39 of Who magazine. You just have a look at it down the bottom. Describe what's going on in that photograph. Be very careful. Oh, right. Yes. Well, that, <laughs> everybody knows that Mo Molly Meldrum used to be a record producer. Yes. And he's very familiar with microphones, um, <laughs> valve microphones. And um, Michael Gadinsky, not many people know this, has been almost, he's almost a robot. He's been completely <laughs> replaced over the years. He talks about going to Hawaii to do record deals, but he goes over there to get a little bit extra of robotic work done on his <laughs> on his butt, so he can actually stamp in time when he hears the music. What is going on? So what, what is, is going happening? on? Explain. Molly is actually, in this photo, connecting a microphone directly into Gadinsky's valve bum amplifier. <laughs> and this is the sound that the concert of the century is looking for. <laughs> Have you seen this oh, picture? Oh, no, I've seen it, and I don't know what to say. Michael Gadinsky oh. has a microphone coming out of his pants. Mm. Molly Meldrum is attempting to, well, wrestle it to the ground. Please explain. Say. And um, <laughs> Michael Gadinsky still has the presence of mind to give Molly the bunny ears <laughs> while all that's going on. Hey. Is, look, is that the cover for the video? <laughs> look, and he's probably sunstroke, the poor bastard. You know, probably at that stage, you wouldn't know what's happening. Is that how deals are shaken on these days? <laughs> I think that's how Molly prefers to sign the dotted line, yes. Oh, wow. Oh, but look, you know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, two, well, two gentlemen. Yeah. You know, I use the word loosely. Yeah. In the business, one grabbing the other one on the genital area, the other one giving him the, the funny okay, mm, that's, that's rabbit the ears. Thing, I mean. That's a general boardroom technique, yeah, as far sure. as I remember. We just wouldn't want to be out of step. No. All right, what have you found? No. Oh. He's saying... <laughs> Please explain. Yeah, no, look, I'm just having a laugh at... Here's another funny photo. We do great funny photos on this radio program, don't we? <laughs> we, do. we really paint the picture for the people out there. What have you got? Well, I'm Sorry. having a look at two, two, two Tibetan monks yeah. down the beach, and I thought that was Hesse at Byron. <laughs> Please thought, explain. Now, 
Do they have fun or what, these Tibetan monks? They're, yeah. they're freeballing, aren't they? they <laughs> free balling. Under those robes, they're freeballing. Yeah. Like, you think, you know, I look at the Tibetan monk brief and I think it's all nutty chanting. It's all sitting around with your legs crossed somewhere. Away. They're down the beach, they're honking onto horns, they're freeballing, the robes are flowing. That's the gig. That's the gig. Get out of radio. That's going to be you and me this time next year in the wacky hats with the big thumping horns. Just dagging about in the beach, buddy. Are those the horns that people take to the footy? You know, when you hear those mad oh, horns yeah. off? Is that mm. there? I'd like to see a, a yeah. whole section in an orchestra full of those horns. Uh -huh. That would be a good look. <laughs> well, I thought they were pipes at Nimbin. Oh, that is Hesse. Oh, oh. No, I'm afraid if that had the horn been bent the other way, yeah. uh, bong style, <laughs> that would be Hesse, oh, I would imagine. Right. But yeah, no, that's, what no, you're holiday, that's what's going on on your no, holidays. I see, I, I see, I, I see. I just say that for the kids. Yeah, well, what if we... <laughs> They expect it of me. What have we got here? Watch out for people popping stuff in your drinks, everybody, because Hang have on. you seen the story, Thieves, Drug and Rob Tourists? Oh, no. Yes, it's a, Please explain. That's what What's it is. What's going on? Australian tourists in Asia are being put to sleep and robbed after accepting sweets and drinks laced with a powerful sleeping drug. <laughs> oh. I'm sure it's not just people having too many drinks in Bali and nodding <laughs> off. Oh, yeah. oh, I've been drugged! What happens? <laughs> I've been drugged with these $7,000 coolers! <laughs> uh, a spate of robberies in the Philippines and China has prompted warnings from the Department of Foreign Affairs. That's Alexander Downer. Mm. Somebody slipped him a mickey. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Apparently, uh, the victims, mainly uh, British and Australian tourists, have found themselves knocked out for 24 hours after accepting spiked food and drink from... You should never accept spiked food from Spain, no. so I find. <laughs> never. And you're going, how's this happening? Well, you know, people are having stuff snuck in their drinks in, uh, you know, yeah. bars or whatever. You don't yeah. notice. You look away for a second, yeah. sure. It can happen. But then there's examples of uh, somebody uh, getting into a cab. Uh, you know, now when you get into a cab, what do you do? Do you look around for a drink? Is no. that normally what you would do? <laughs> if you're in the front seat, you might. Once in the car, the victims are introduced to the robber's younger sister who offers them an orange juice <laughs> laced with drugs. Please explain. Yeah, who's getting into a cab and go, oh, Nothing not, suspicious so far. Oh, no. you got an OJ in the cab. We don't get this back home. <laughs> you don't get that in, in, in business class <laughs> on, on an airline. Well, there's so no, you think you're going to get in a cab in oh, Bali and yeah. someone's coming out with a bag of peanuts and an orange juice. You go, oh, nothing suspicious here. I might just drink the whole lot. Probably yeah. with half a ton of dry ice coming out of it. <laughs> with a big moustache. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, is that what you're looking for? The other day we were playing this, Hesse. Have a look at this. This is one of the toys, the bad guy, in fact, uh, from the new film A Bug's Life, which is a fine new Disney animated uh, Oh, effort. right, right. And here's the sound it makes when you press it. I'll just okay. play it to you again. Listen to this. <laughs> now, people have been yeah. faxing and emailing us saying, yeah. what were you guys doing playing that recording of the Prime Minister on your show for? Mm. Listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> there he is laughing at that digger's joke at that RSL. <laughs> Our Prime Minister is the new villain in a bug's life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, keep going, buddy. That's uncanny. Go on. <laughs> oh. Oh, there it is. This is great fun. And it's not hard to picture our Prime Minister as an insect. <laughs> Please explain. Oh. Dear. Dear. That's a funny thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's he's trying to boost his super, I think. Hey, uh, hey Tony, you know, I went up, uh, I went up to the counter at my local bank. Yeah, did you? And uh, I wanted to make a transaction, and they said, "Sure, but first, drink this glass of cordial." <laughs> and I don't know what happened, but when I came round, I had nothing in my pocket. <laughs> you bastard! <laughs> <laughs> Mickey, I'm sure people have heard the news. If you bank with the Commonwealth, you'll have to get ready for a rise in withdrawal fee, surprise. Please explain. Oh, dear. As of next month, they'll be increasing by up to 50 cents a transaction. Please explain. All over-the-counter withdrawals at bank branches and post offices will cost $2. And ATM withdrawals will cost 60 cents, up from 45. Please explain. On your Commonwealth. So what are they doing? They're serving you a latte and a bit of bloody carrot cake with it or something. What's so, going on? Well, obviously. 
obviously the enormous profits that they've been making uh, require them to put all their prices up. It's, I mean, it's <laughs> clearly some kind of logic we just sure. not grasp. I've aren't? said it, Mick said it, yeah. I've said it, mm. Gracie's thought about it, mm. but we're in the wrong game. <laughs> we are in the wrong game. <laughs> we'll what open a, our own That's bank. a great game. Uh, what about this Make your idea. profit, put up your services, because uh. you made profit out the and last time. And here's yeah. what we'll do, here's yeah. how we'll make money. We'll open our own bank and then systematically close it down yeah. and oh. charge fees for doing so. And I notice a few of the banks are starting to merge. Are we heading towards Peter Costello's super banks? Oh, no. Please explain. Because when there's only two banks to choose from, I'm sure the fees will come plunging down. Oh, right, the super and the duper. That's right. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> what about this for an idea? What about if everyone in Australia just gets together, yeah. we just all pull our money out of all the banks, yeah. we yeah. find somewhere to put it, somewhere yeah. safe, yeah. I don't know, Mallorca, yeah. <laughs> and we say to the banks, we're not giving you back our money until you can start treating people like decent human beings. Yeah. Is that that's just a crazy idea it's off, too the, top, far fetched. off yeah. the top of my head. Please explain. Oh, well, mm. I called my bank manager and this is all he had to say. <laughs> <laughs> <And then, laughs> fees are going up again. <laughs> the super banks are coming. <laughs> banks are closing again. Get ready for the merger. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. We're having fun. I'm not exaggerating. Those figures are... Oh, it's, it's fantastic. Your legitimate news. <laughs> We've missed a meeting somewhere. We have had a few calls about something I said in the previous hour. Well, no, not that. <laughs> mm. About something else I mentioned. Uh, Please explain. Uh, puppetry of the penis. Yeah. You mm. know, I know mm. Simon Morley is mm. a pioneer. Yes. Mm. I don't know anyone else who makes a living from doing what he does. Mm. But listen to this email we've received from Gaza. And he says uh, that he's just been reading Spike Milligan's war memoirs. Remember those mad war memoirs Spike Milligan oh, put yep. out a few years yeah. ago? Adolf Hitler, my part in his downfall. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, on page 68 of Adolf Hitler, my part in his downfall, he talks about uh, the, the nights they used to have in the army. This is in World War II. Yes. Uh, where they would have entertainment shows and people would do their skills for everyone else in the mm. platoon. Mm. This is actually word for word from Spike Milligan's book. But the most unbelievable act was Gunner Plunger Bailey, who did an entire 20-minute act with his genitals. Wow. It was done on a very professional basis. After lights out, a gunner would use a torch as a spotlight, which lit the artist's genitals. The third member of the act, ah, you see, Simon's uh, streamlined the formula. Absolutely. Mm. Uh, would... Uh, <laughs> would light the uh, the third member of the act, Bill Hall, sang Bird's Song at Eventide mm -hmm. as the star manipulated his genitals to resemble sausage on a plate, <laughs> the last turkey in the shop, <laughs> sack of flour, the roaring of the lions, and the most popular, using a pair of spectacles, Groucho Marx. <laughs> Please explain. How's that? I mean, Simon, yeah. Simon's a bit of a purist. No props for sure, Simon. Sure, You know, I've tried to get him to include a cigar. No. <laughs> he won't go for it. Won't go for it. So there you go. Only 20 minutes, but... Only 20 minutes. Yeah, Simon's up to main event mm. length season. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, is that all we want to talk about uh, at this point? I think I'm done. Because I think we want to get the listeners involved. It's time. There's plenty of things to explain, and mm. we've got the time to do it. And the brain of Paul Hester at our disposal. Give us a call, 1-800-657-657. This is Martin Malloy. And if you think, if you think that a little chorus like that is going to change my view, then you are very sadly mistaken. Explain, 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 explain. Thank you, Gorinda. Good on you, Gorinda. Hand behind the counter down our local shop. Paul Hester yeah. is with us on mm. Please Explain. We've been enjoying your show, uh, oh, Paul. Yeah. Uh, Great work, sir. Thanks, mate. Yeah, what's... It peaks in the last episode, yeah. as you all know. But mm. no, there's a good one on this one on yeah. Saturday. This Saturday happened? coming, we've got the Great Paint Off. Which oh, we right. only did one during the whole series, where yeah. we, we built an extra bit of stage and we have Noel Crombie, Reg Mombasa and, and Pete O'Doherty from The Mentals mm. painting. They're all doing a mural each. All and right. through the whole performance, they just paint all night and then they get up and sing. Bob Franklin's on. And oh, does, he's great. He's yep. hilarious. He takes the whole thing into a new realm. Mm. And um, The Largest Living Things are bonking a song around and Raymond Jay comes out and stands on a few foot pedals and falls over. <laughs> and it's a real good one. Mm. For me, it's my favourite one. All it's right. the one that smells of the shed. Yes, no, well, there's a, you've obviously got a lot of uh, comedy in there as well as the music. Are you intending... Comedy. Do you think you'll be having David Oldfield on to do some of his uh, <laughs> hilarious gags? <laughs> no. <laughs> He's got a million of them. Firstly, no, did no. One Nation have won the election in Newcastle, <laughs> oh, hasn't it? No, that's a stunning <laughs> victory. It's an absolute stunning that's victory. That's what they're claiming. Oh, on uh, your bike then. 
Uh, but he's on about uh, cannibalism again. Yeah. He's... Uh, Please explain. Oh, mm. it's just a shame he wasn't around then, so he oh, could have yeah. been eaten. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I get the feeling every time Oldfield opens his bum mouth, it's because he's no one's taken any notice of them because they don't have a policy and they don't have a party. They just have a shitload of money in a bank account. <laughs> um, so what? What I think he just does it because they, they don't do anything else yeah. other than piss people off yeah. with ignorant comments. What's he saying now, Tone? Uh, yes, Aboriginals uh, were cannibals. But I'm trying to work out why yeah, he would say that. No. It was an answer to someone. Uh, apparently, is why should we cut off Aboriginal funding because they're mm. just on the chomp all day long. <laughs> That's right. For their own good. There you go. Their eyes are too big for their stomachs. I don't, what can you do with him? Can you sew it up? Can you sew up a man like that uh, and just know. leave a straw coming out and leave oh, him on know. a seat but somewhere? But uh, Mr. Oldfield said that Aborigines were not frolicking by the seashore collecting shells. <laughs> oh, and, and, how does he know? But, but he's... But, <laughs> The, uh, but the idea is he's suggesting that, that that's what they reckon they've been doing. Exactly. <laughs> We're on the frolic looking for shells all day. No, they're not, says David Oldfield. <laughs> you are not. You're all wrong. Please explain. That's my image, too, of uh, the Aboriginal way of life. That's all the images I get from news and current affairs. It's just Aboriginals frolicking along the beach. Oh, it's yeah. like a non-stop like episode of Baywatch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like the Blue Lagoon. <laughs> We're all getting around like Christopher Atkins. <laughs> dear, oh, dear. Need yeah. some new material, yeah. that David Oldfield. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, who Who's stumped and confused and angry, Mick? Rod is. How are you, Rod? Hi, fellas. What's on your mind, buddy? Well, I was shopping last night, as you do, mm. and um, <laughs> in the in the lolly aisle, there's yogurt-covered apricots. Yes. Uh, Nothing unusual. No, no. In little, little letters, it's got no added sugar. Yeah. And then in great big letters, caffeine-free. Please explain. <laughs> caffeine-free apricots, you say? Oh. Yeah. Whatever will they think of next? <laughs> See, now I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Up until that point, I was about to walk on by. Oh, oh. You could R- smoke more cigarettes if mm. you ate those. Isn't that how it works, Mick? <laughs> Pretty much. That's saying to That's you? right. Yep. I have a Peter Winnie Blues and some of those decaf apricots. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Did you try one, mate? No, I didn't try any, but is it in the yoghurt or is it in the apricots? Uh, caffeine? Uh, yeah. Gee, I think it's in the bloke who wrote on the label. Yes. Sure, he's, he's had one latte too many, I think. <laughs> it's, it's in the label. That's where it is. <laughs> yeah, it's in the ink. Well, that's a piece explained for sure. Yeah. Thank you, Rod. Justin is on the line. What have you seen out and about, Justin? Well, I was driving down Sydney the other um, day, fellas, and mm. you know how you got those charity buses for, like, disabled people and all that? You sure, yeah. I pulled up at the lights next to a blind awareness society, kind of a blind society thing for blind people, and the bus had windows for some reason. Oh, Please explain. Just because you're not going to deny them a view just because they're sight impaired. <laughs> oh. I came to one assumption, though. Yeah? I thought, you know, why restrict them from giving the fruit, a pressed fruit bowl to other people, you know what I mean? Ah, <laughs> oh, so that's... Yeah, yeah you're on to it. Oh, yeah. So they can join in too. They oh. can sh- put their ass up to the window and give it to everyone else. <laughs> it's abstract, yeah. So yeah, you it, do feel that way quite often. So in a bus. they don't really miss the view, but mm. obviously mm. they're being denied the all Australian right of going the uh, yeah. fruit bowl. Yeah. I actually, uh, I was mooning a, uh, a blind bus once, yeah. and I realised it was kind of hard to like get my point across. So yeah. I made them feel my bottom like braille. <laughs> Please explain. You know, stop the Reach bus. out the window. Just grab there. You go there. Yeah, check out. <laughs> One at a time. <laughs> I'm all right. But, but well, I, I think the windows are there so we can look in. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah. Mm. So what, you would just have uh, blind people just driving around a dark room or dark <laughs> wheels? Like that bus from the gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> Clint Eastwood was driving. <laughs> all right. Well, I suppose it is a piece explained nonetheless. Yeah, it is. Justin, we've got a Gary on the line. Gary? G'day. How are you going? Good. What's got you thinking? Look, I'm really puzzled. Why is it that wherever you go in Australia to get yeah. some work done on your car, doesn't matter what it is, whether it's a mechanic or auto or electrician or whatever, mm. you go to pick your car up in the afternoon yeah. and there's your car sitting out the front, unlocked with the keys in the ignition. Please I, explain. Do they reckon they're in a, a theft-free zone? I mean, what are they all about? <laughs> Please but, explain. But have you ever had yes. your car stolen from the mechanics? Mm, funnily enough, no. No? What are you mm. driving there? Uh, a p- Nissan. Mm. Oh, yeah. Nis- a Nissan what? Pulsar. Mm. Mm. Oh, yes, and good, Nick? Yeah? Yeah, okay. You know what I reckon they're doing? What's that? I reckon they just realised their own work is so crap 
that there's no way anyone, even if they got the keys and the ignition and started it, they were going to drive it off because I'm an, I'm an idiot. Yeah, 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 leave it all there. I'm crap at what I do. Just leave it out. There's no way anyone's going to drive that bastard away. Yeah, no. Go Not on. in this lifetime. Go on, mate. Try and start it. Go, Go on. on. I dare you. I dare you. <laughs> Take any one you like. Hey, I'll throw you the keys to the Jag. Okay. Have a go at that. Bugger lugs. <laughs> Try a reversion, do you? <laughs> well, I suppose, you know, you'd have to be pretty game. You're taking a punt, stealing a car from out front of the mechanics. You are. I mean, oh, it's like yeah. having a drink out front of the Poison Information Centre. <laughs> it could go horribly wrong. That's right. Yeah, that car with three wheels. Hmm. Let's give it a crack. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, okay, we'd have to actually uh, see the car, Gary, to know whether it's so shit that no one would steal it. Yes, Gary. Uh, <laughs> Harry. <laughs> Gary. No one was implying that. No, no. Have we got Peter on the line? Peter? Yeah, I'm here, mate. What have you got for us? Um, I'd just like to know how you're connected to um, South Park on the TV. Please explain. Oh, uh, you'll have to do that. Uh, well, um, the band that plays the opening and closing credits, yes. their name is Primus. Yes, they are. Yeah, and on um, one of their albums, they've got a song called You Can't Kill Michael Malloy. Uh, is that true? Because uh, more of a coincidence is their last album was called The Brown, the Brown Album. The yeah, Brown Album, right. like ours. Oh, hang on, Peter. And nah, it's doing my head in. Are you Please s- explain. They've done The Brown oh. Album. And they've got a song called what? You can't kill Michael Malloy. Is that true? Mm. Oh, and on, uh, please, no one put that to the test. Yeah. That let, there's no, you know, we don't, we don't need to put that one to bed. Okay. Can I just say so that a lot now? Of people and would like to hear that. Tony and Mick are Primus. All right, oh, Peter. Oh, you, you said got you wouldn't tell. Yes, um, no, what do you think they're taking band, a year off? So you're in there somewhere, Hesse. Sorry, sorry, I spoke. Is there, a... there a three-piece? So are you in there? Somewhere? Oh, is he oh, in there too? Uh, no, my new band's called Hairpiece. Uh, I'll be no, no. I'll just be roadieing for Mick and Mick and Tony. Uh, All I've got to do is plug one lead in and get the Eskies up on stage. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And is it uh, fair to say that their South Park's back on? Yeah, this, tonight, mate. Tonight, oh, rock and roll. It's a big um. Chef Aid concert. Oh, oh is that one on Chef tonight? Chef Aid. Oh, that's that's going to be fantastic. Oh, that babe. is indeed the episode <laughs> they're showing. All right, which is good. our winning conundrum. We've got uh, Rod with the caffeine-free apricots. We've got Justin with those uh, window, f- well, window-compatible buses. We've got uh, <laughs> Gary with the mechanics parking your car out the front. Yes. Peter with the connection to Martin Malloy on South Park. Well, you know, they did well. They spoke well, but I, I can't get over number one today. Roddy. Oh, caffeine-free yeah. rock. Are you still with us, sir? Yeah, I'm still with you, but I don't like being called Roddy. Oh, sorry about that. Did I say Roddy? Yeah, it's Rod. Sorry, mate. Sorry, Rod. <laughs> Won't happen again. Oh, your mother, my mother used to call me that. So you imagine how angry he would have been with a cup of coffees under the belt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've got the well. three-pack of CDs coming your way, including the caffeine-free Eat Your Peas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's in there, Paul. Hissy <laughs> shit wins it on again. It's on uh, on the weekend. Explains. Saturday. <laughs> explains. Explains. Oh, we wouldn't be running that late. There's absolutely no way. We'd like to thank Paul Hester and everyone who took part in his display. Russell Gilbert, his show's on tonight. It doesn't conflict with South Park. You'll be able to see both. His is on at 8.30 on Channel 9. Everyone who took part in Radio Gladiators. We will be back tomorrow. Thanks to uh, Coca-Cola Island. Who is our guest, Sensia? Who's dropping by? Who? Matty P. Matty P. Haven't seen him for a little while. He can tell us what is going on with that pig movie. There you go. And just before we go, uh, here's the fax number. If there's anything you'd like to hear before it is erased once and for all, <laughs> the number is 1-800-816-679. That's not going to be erased ever. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Hey, Paul, do you want to hear our very first pilot for Martin Malloy? Oh, that one that you've never played to anyone. It goes way, way back. We've had a few requests for this. I don't know if it actually makes sense, no. but uh, here it is, the earliest pilot that we did all those years ago. That was new music from Slade, welcoming you to another round of Martin Malloy with myself, Tony Martin, and this bloke, Mick Malloy. Smoke him if you've got him. Ready to go, Mick? I'm not here for a haircut, Tone. And don't forget, later we'll be launching our new competition, the $100 Lunchbox. But first, Mick, what do you make of this dismissal business? It's a joke, Tone. Sir John Kerr is a dead set idiot. Why? Because he's 
dumped Gough Whitlam? Nah, because he tried to bot a whole packet of Winnie Blues off me at the Melbourne Cup. Ha ha ha, we're on fire today. <laughs> but let's turn our attention to Michael Jackson. His new single, Burn, has been released. And the critics Those duds. are calling it an attempt to cross over to white mainstream radio. Michael Jackson's living in fantasy land tone. When will he realise he'll always be a black guy with a big fat nose? You're not wrong, Mick Malloy, but it's time for... Moment of truth. Thanks, Pete, or as we know him, young master copyright. Mick, care to explain moment of truth? There's four lies, no facts. Well, no, not necessarily four. Hang on. Don't worry, Mick. I'm sure you'll get the hang of it eventually. Wait a minute, Tone. Look who's just walked in. It's our special guest, Jim Owen. How are you, fellas? It's great to be here. I'm a big fan of your show. Will you kids keep it down up here? Look, it's another guest, my mum. Turn that off and get back to bed. You two, out. Oh, mum. Or there'll be no Starsky and Hutch. Aww. Turn that off. Mum. Martin Malloy is a misguided production in association with half-baked ideas and ill-conceived concepts proprietary limited. Brought to you by Coca-Cola Island. Pete Smith speaking. I have accepted their resignations and I believe that their resignations are appropriate. <laughs>